In this example, we want to determine the intervals on which this function that's given is increasing or decreasing. Uh, then we're going to find the local maximum and minimum values of f using the first derivative test. And then we'll determine the intervals on which the function is concave up or concave down. And then find the inflection points for this function. All right, so the first thing is uh, we need to find the critical values for this function, and that's and we're going to do that by say by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to have f prime of x. Okay, so taking the derivative with respect to x, we're going to get two x minus one minus the derivative of natural log x is one over x. Okay. All right, so we're going to set this equal to zero. Okay. All right, so we, what I can do here is uh, go ahead and multiply uh, both sides by x. And so this will give us 2x squared minus x minus 1 equals to 0. And this is going to factor as 2x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay. So this is, uh, this is going to give us the solutions of x equals to negative 1 half or x equals to 1. Okay. All right. So we end up getting uh, we have two solutions here. However, uh, if we go back to our original function and look at the domain of this, uh, because of natural log here, this function is going to be, the domain of this function will only be when x is strictly greater than zero. Okay. So we don't need to worry about this value here because it's, it's on the, it's, it's basically less than zero. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, plot these on the number line. So this is, make this a parenthesis, this is going to be zero, and it's going to positive infinity, okay? So we have x equals to one here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick a, pick a point from each interval, okay? So we have... Okay, so I'm going to pick a point from here and pick another point here. So I'm going to choose one half, and I'm going to choose two here. So we're going to so we're going to plug these test points back into the first derivative of our function. Okay, so we have f prime of one half. Okay, so that's going to be 2 times 1 half minus 1 minus 1 over 1 half. Okay. So that's going to give us, uh, let's see. So just, that's going to give us, uh, let's see, um, it's 1, so minus 1 half. Okay. which is less than zero. Okay. So that indicates for that, on that particular interval from zero to one, okay, the function is going to decrease. Okay. So I'm just gonna draw an arrow here, okay, to indicate that's decreasing on that interval. Okay. And then now we're gonna evaluate the, uh, the other test point. So evaluate two at the, at the uh, we're gonna plug two into the first derivative. Okay. So we're gonna have two times two minus one minus one over two. Okay. All right. So we end up getting, um, so we're gonna get 2.5 or, or we can say five halves here, okay. Uh, let's see, let me check, let me see something. 
Yeah, yeah, five has. Okay, and then that's going to be greater than zero. Okay. All right. So that means on that particular interval from one to infinity, our function is increasing. Okay. All right. Okay. So we can go ahead and summarize this result. Let me move this down. Okay. All right. So we have. Uh, the function is going to be increasing. So it's increasing on, okay, uh, starting from 1 to infinity, and it's decreasing from 0 to 1. Okay. All right, so from here we can go ahead and apply the first derivative test. Okay, so just copying what we got earlier. So we have one here. Okay, so we have, uh, we had this was, it was decreasing on this interval and our function was increasing on this interval. Okay, so that implies that there's going to be a, um, a relative minimum at that point. Okay, so there's a relative minimum. At x equals to 1. Okay, so at this point, at this x, at the value of x. Okay, so to get the coordinate, right, we know, uh, since we're given, we know where the minimum is occurring, and that's going to be at x equals 1, so we basically evaluate the original function at that point. Okay, so we're going to have f of 1, so our original function was x squared minus x minus natural log x, okay, so f prime of 1 is going to give us we have 1 squared minus 1 minus the natural log 1. Okay, so that's going to give us a value of 0. Okay, keeping in mind that the natural log 1 is 0. Okay. All right, so therefore the coordinate, okay, for, the, uh, for this turning point is at 1, 0. Okay. So the relative minimum. Okay, occurs at the coordinate of 1, 0. Okay. All right. Okay, so next thing is to determine the concavity. Um, in that case, we're going to use the second derivative of our function. Okay, so we had the first derivative was 2x minus 1 minus 1 over x. Okay, so we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to x. Okay, so we're going to have 2. Okay, um, the derivative of 1 over x is going to be, uh, we're going to get minus 1 over x squared. So that's going to give us positive 1 over x squared here. Okay. All right, so we're going to set this equal to 0. Okay. And again, what we can do is we can multiply both sides of this by x squared. So we're going to get 2x squared plus 1 equals to 0. Okay. Uh, by the way, um, if you, right, in our in the first derivative, we have x in the denominator here. Okay. Um, and so that tells us that this derivative is not defined at 0. However, uh, this is not, a, that's, so x equals 0 is not a critical point uh, because it's not in the domain of the original function, okay? So just something to keep in mind. And we have a similar situation here, okay? So the second derivative is not defined at 0. However, it's, that's because, or at the same time, that 0 is not in the original, I'm sorry, it's not in the domain of the function, okay? All right, so setting this equal to 0, uh, we end up getting no solution here. 
right? Because we have x squared equals to minus one half. Okay, so that means there is no real value. There's no real value such that when you square it, it's going to give you minus half, minus one half. Okay, so there's no real solution here. Okay, so that means um, for right for the number line. Okay, okay we're going from zero okay, again, similar to what we have up here. Zero to positive infinity. Okay, so there is no. Uh, there was no solution, okay, so that means, right, the second, there's no value of x that will make the second derivative of our function equal to zero. So in that case, we just pick any point in this interval, so let's go ahead and choose one. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me I'll do it in a different color just to be consistent with what we had earlier. So just choose one here. Okay. So that's our test point. So we're going to take that value and plug it back into the second derivative of f. So we have f prime of one. That's going to be two plus one over one squared. So that's going to give us a value of three. And that's bigger than zero, so that tells us that for any value that we pick in this interval, it's going to be positive. Therefore, this is going to be concave up from zero to infinity. Okay. It's concave up okay, from zero to infinity. Okay. All right. So in this case, uh, we don't have, right, there is no concavity change, okay? So in this case, there are no inflection points, okay? And since there is no change in concavity, Okay, so it's it, so it's concave up on the entire interval from zero to infinity. Okay, all right, so that's the result that we have here. Okay, let's so given the function, uh, we determine the intervals in which the function is increasing or decreasing. We do that by finding the critical numbers, uh, and we get those by taking the or setting the derivative of our function equal to zero. Okay. And recall that we have x equals to negative one half. However, that's not in the domain of the original function. Okay. So we only end up with one critical number. Okay. It turns out that this function's decreasing from zero to one and then increasing from one to infinity. Okay. And then from there, using the second derivative test, I'm sorry, the first derivative test, uh, we can we figured out that at, at the value of x equals one, we get a relative max and relative min. Okay. So we had a relative min at x equals to one. Okay, um, relative min, not relative max. Okay, so we have relative min at one zero, and then from there um, we can use the second derivative to find the, to determine the concavity of this function. Okay, so it turns out that there is no values of x that make the second derivative equal to zero. So therefore, we just choose right. We choose any point from zero to infinity, and it turns out that's going to be concave up on the entire interval from zero to infinity. And therefore, since there's no change in concavity, therefore there are, there are no inflection points okay, for this function. Okay.